Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to look at the some of the highlights from the Barry Morphew arrest affidavit. It was released today. It's 129 pages, but it's nothing like the Chris Watts affidavit. Something that does appear to have emerged in the affidavit, it's on page 123, is that Barry seemed to be involved, intimately involved in a relationship with someone called Shoshana Dog. That's on page 123 and 124 of the affidavit. We'll be going through that in some detail as well as through some of the most shocking images from the affidavit. I'll also be doing a live stream where I'll be taking you guys through the first couple of pages, around about the first half dozen pages of the affidavit and discussing a few other issues such as the legalities around him getting bond and uh, I think there might be some surprises for you guys in that area. Before we get to today's episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So we're going straight to page 123. So it's right near the end, the sort of epilogue area, the last six or seven pages of the affidavit, Shoshana Dark comes up. And the text reads, On December 16, 2020, Deputy Miles Jones received a tip from a person who requested to remain anonymous. She reported that her friend Shoshona Louise Dark is intimately involved in a relationship with Barry. Now bear in mind, this is a tip, this is something that was passed on by someone that's apparently her friend, right? Then uh, it goes on to say the next day on December 17th, 2020, Sergeant, um, well, I'm not quite sure how to say this guy's name, Heis Julian and Agent Kale interviewed Dark at the CSO office. Uh, she said she had been, she had known Barry since October 2020 because she cleaned his neighbor's house and met him at the dumpster by chance. She denied being in a romantic or sexual relationship with Barry. Dark deleted items on her phone, one possibly being a second phone number for Barry, in front of investigators and was evasive in answering questions. Dark said she called the CBI tip line in May 2020 to report strange vehicles being in the area around Puma Path around the time Suzanne disappeared. Dark said in the interview, uh, in December that she did not know Suzanne and Suzanne she's my age she's a lot of people say I resemble her and then we go into the next page from December 2020 through April 2021 um, numerous Salida residents reported that Dark was in a relationship with Barry so it's kind of just like rumors from various Salida residents that are that's mentioned in this affidavit uh, their relationship is reported to date back to July 2020, though investigators have not confirmed that. So it's it's kind of been speculated about. A poll camera installed by the FBI has captured Barry's truck consistently coming and going from the Darks residence. That is evidence of some kind, often between 9 o'clock at night and 11 o'clock at night, sometimes staying through the night. Make of that what you will. CBI agents Graham and Cahill confirmed that Dark and Barry checked into the Antis Hotel in Colorado Springs on February 12th, 2021 and checked out hmm, on Valentine's Day as captured on surveillance footage below with Barry carrying Dark's luggage and Dark holding a bouquet of flowers. Do you need more evidence than that? Is it still, it could be anything? What do you guys think? Barry's cell phone was either off or in airplane mode during a majority of this trip. So you might say, this is really brazen, can you believe it? Uh, something else that does actually appear in the affidavit is a text apparently from Suzanne accusing Barry of having an affair. In this regard, I'm going to bring up two pages from the discovery. The one is page 13 of 129 where she says, I'm done, I could care less what you're up to and have been for years. We just need to figure this out civilly. What do you think that means, right? And then the other text that I want to draw your attention to comes up a uh, fair bit later on page 33. I think on April 24th, 2020, Suzanne sent Barry the following message that was recovered from deleted images. 
Oh, I'm sure your mistress has you all happy now. So you can say you love me, but bully me when you're with me. Yeah, that's love. So she's actually referring to his mistress by, you know, directly. It's not indirectly. It's pretty explicit, isn't it? Now, obviously, in the live stream, I'll provide a little bit more context to how the whole thing was playing out, how Suzanne was actually trying to uh, tick all the boxes in order to allow herself to get out of a very, I think she knew it was going to be a very difficult divorce, but she wanted to be prepared. And I think she possibly underestimated Barry's resolve, right? So I just want you to know at this point, the position of this channel is that we simply reviewing the affidavit we're not really taking a position either way including on the affair the affidavit refers to an affair it refers to some people talking about it and we're simply highlighting that was there an affair well i'll leave that to you to decide based on uh based on the evidence based on some of these texts right so from now we're going to go through the 10 most shocking images from the affidavit and i've got to tell you they are hard to see they they're pretty um grainy they're all black and white they're certainly a lot worse quality than the chris watts affidavit they remind me a little bit of the letitia stork affidavit perhaps slightly better quality than that and there's some very interesting text around some of these images but what i really want to do is just show you these images and then kind of gloss through the remainder of the affidavit so the first image that I want to show you is page 35 and it refers to Barry being at the Holiday Inn Express and you can see Barry um, carrying all sorts of things. I thought there would be CCTV footage of him at the hotel. It's quite hard to say whether there are um, kind of liquid stains on whatever he's carrying or whether that's just kind of dirt or um, kind of tassels or something you know, raggedy clothing or something that he's carrying. It's quite difficult to tell from from that image. But that is an image that we haven't seen before of Barry on the day, on Mother's Day um, in 2020, right? The day Suzanne disappeared. The next image I want to show you, again, it's a little bit difficult to make out, but it's basically dealing with the um, the damage to the door, the bedroom door. It looks like there's a crack going all the way up the the sort of frame of the door, if I'm seeing it correctly. Um, and then to me, the, the text surrounding that is pretty, pretty troubling. Um, it talks about the previous owners, I think, of that residence on uh, Puma Path. And um, one of them said that, you know, there was no damage to that master bedroom door jam when they sold the residence to Barry and Suzanne. Um, Kara and Steve also, and this is quite interesting, um, these previous owners separately said that they suspected that Barry had done something to Suzanne after, they, Suzanne after they heard the news of her disappearance. And they based this apparently on multiple observations they made of Barry and after the sale of the house. Now it will be very interesting to hear what they mean, what they based that on, um, possibly at trial. The third... Uh, um, image that I want to draw your attention to is the mountain bike. You can, I must say, I imagined it almost completely on dirt, but there's quite a lot of um, grass it looks like over there. And um, it's not kind of resting at the bottom of that hill, it's sort of some of the way down. Um, I'm not sure if I can see a helmet in that picture, um, but that is certainly giving um, texture and you know giving a sense of that mountain bike you know i also thought it was under a bridge perhaps from that perspective you can't really see it on to the fourth image there are some screen grabs of barry um, disposing of garbage bags it looks like kind of multiple locations and there are also obviously um, ref references references to what he's doing in the text above and below those images we'll eventually get to that this is page 40 of the affidavit. The next image is scratches on Barry's arm. It's hard to tell what you're looking at here because there's no color, but you can see what appear to be um, one or two sort of lesions just above the elbow mark. 
perhaps even higher than that. Um, they do look like they could be um, nail marks or semicircles, but it's difficult to tell with this kind of quality um, you know, image. Immediately below that, it refers to a canine search, which is quite interesting. Then we, we, we go to point number six, and once again, it's Barry entering the hotel room, carrying a, a few things with him um, with, with multiple timestamps. That's on page 72. Then um, number seven, the only thing that I found just kind of odd was you, you sort of literally see a altered rifle in the image. And then there's a little bit of a description around what is going on there. And I think that occurred on February 29th, 2021, so a little bit earlier this year. Then number eight, um, it's not so much that this is a shocking image. You just are, are seeing Barry. Um, it's the equivalent of Chris Watts when he was questioned by Officer Coonrod, as far as I understand. It is where he's back at the house and he's being asked questions about kind of what is going on. And he seems fairly relaxed. He's got his hands in his pockets and there's, again, some text around that. Number nine um, is referring to, um, you know, again, uh, Barry's responses, I guess, at the time when he was asked about the dart boxes, right? So you're just putting a face to that particular moment. And I wonder whether we'll ever see any of this footage or whether it'll be sort of um, behind the sort of almost the paywall of the court um, or whether it'll eventually be released. Uh, let's hope it will. And then the final one is really... Um, not so much the image, but the text surrounding it. We're dealing with whether Barry ever told his children, his daughters, whether his wife was having an affair. Now, now consider the irony. If he was having an affair, but then he tells his daughters that his wife was having an affair. And this is on page 110 of the affidavit. And it, what is interesting there is, is it's highlighted with footnote 78 saying, this contradicts Barry's earlier statement that same day to the FBI that he had not told his girls about the affair. Quite interesting. So more to come. I will be doing a live stream dealing with the first half dozen pages or so of the affidavit and a few other legal uh, points. So look out for that. That'll be at, I think, half past five um, Colorado time, something like that. But approximately an hour from now, uh, you know, from when you've heard this video, probably about an hour from now. Uh, but if you're not sure, just keep your eyes on uh, YouTube and um, you'll, you know, the live will be coming up quite soon. I will also be, you know, continuing coverage of the Gabby Petito case. There's been some obviously very sad news there. Um, more evidence is coming out there. There's talk about... Could the parents of could Brian's parents be arrested? Also, the 911 call, the 911 call has been released, and I'll be talking to you guys a little bit about that tomorrow. So that's something to look out for on Tuesday. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.